Hi, this is Dan Courtney. This is a video addressing an issue that has been a thorn in the side of theists for a long time. Miracles. Specifically, I'm going to look at presuppositional apologist Dr. Greg Bonson's writing on the subject titled, The Problem of Miracles. Although miracle claims are an issue for any theology that claims them, I'm focusing on Dr. Bonson's paper because exposing his common presuppositional understanding of miracles complements my other work on presuppositionalism, and I did not include an analysis of miracles in my most recent video, Presuppositionalism, Fallacy, and Failure. So, while this analysis of Dr. Bonson's work could rightly be added to the list of fallacies and failures of presuppositionalism, it could just as easily be used as a critique of the general Christian conception of miracles. In Dr. Bonson's paper, The Problem of Miracles, the first half, 54% to be precise, is devoted to constructing straw man arguments, or at best, pointing to arguments ancillary to the main problems with the Christian miracle claims. For example, Bonson claims that a common complaint from non-believers is, quote, How can anybody with even a smattering of high school science believe that a virgin can conceive a child, a man can walk on water, a storm can be calmed upon command, the blind or lame can be instantly healed, or a dead corpse can resurrect? The modern world knows better. The miracle claims of Christianity are evidence of its irrationality and superstitious character, unquote. While the incredulity of the Christian may be legitimately questioned, such ad hominem attacks are not serious critiques of the veracity of miracles. Bonson also complains of Hume's observation that miracles come chiefly from our ignorant ancestors. Hume may have used the term ignorant as a pejorative, but it need not be the case to make the point. In fact, the Bible, being filled with miracles, comes from a pre-scientific era in which man's general understanding of the natural world was significantly less than today. This has nothing to do with native intelligence and everything to do with collective experience and the later development of the means to study the world objectively and empirically. As we'll see, ignorance, specifically of our scientific understanding of nature, is a necessary component for the flourishing of miracle stories and the correlation of the increase in our scientific literacy with the reduction in miracle claims is not simply coincidental. Dr. Bonson also tries to suggest that we are no more skeptical today than we were 2,000 years ago and even trots out the biblical stories such as the Doubting Thomas and others to lend credibility to the supposed skeptical vein in the ancient world. This is clearly a red herring. Skepticism does indeed seem to be a rare quality in humankind today, Dr. Bonson's acceptance of miracles being a case in point, just as there was a general lack of skepticism two millennia past. But even more so in Dr. Bonson's case that he doesn't seem to recognize that such supposed accounts of skepticism in the biblical narrative are more likely rhetorical devices used to try to enhance the credibility of the story than actual historical accounts. Dr. Bonson's lack of skepticism about ancient accounts of skepticism is truly ironic. The statement that Bonson posits from the, quote, hypothetical believer, unquote, that we heard before, makes its return as a straw man that Dr. Bonson uses to deconstruct the reasoning such that he can point out that the argument rejects miracles a priori, and thus, as he claims, it begs the question. This is followed by several Bible verses that Dr. Bonson uses to establish God's sovereignty over his creation, followed by the statement, quote, If this God depicted in the pages of the Bible actually exists, then it would be preposterous to try to rule out the possibility of miracles, unquote. Bonson's acceptance of the biblical God and the miracles claimed in the Bible, a priori, as justification for the possibility of miracles is exactly the type of question begging for which he impugns his, quote, hypothetical unbeliever, unquote. He then concludes that the unbeliever is simply expressing, quote, their presuppositional commitment to a solely naturalistic understanding of the world in which we live, unquote. This is a classic in unwarranted shifting of the burden of proof from the theist 
that is making a positive claim about a supernatural understanding of the world to the atheist that makes no claim about a supposed supernatural existence. Dr. Bonson is thus making an argument from ignorance, a fallacy which assumes his position, giving the absence of evidence to the contrary. But only after wading through Bonson's straw man arguments and logical fallacies do we get to the heart of the matter. Over halfway through the paper, we finally get a positive account of miracles. There are three requirements for an event to be classified as a miracle, according to Bonson, which he lays out as follows. One, the amazing or extraordinary character of the events being described, full of wonder, evoking astonishment. Two, the difficulty of these events exceeding normal human ability, full of power and act of divine strength, and or, three, the purpose of such events pointing beyond themselves to some special theological lesson or truth, signs and omens. It is further explained that events such as hurricanes meet these criteria, and yet are not considered miracles because we have, through meteorology, a natural explanation for such events. Likewise, the beauty of the sea or the grandeur of the stars is not conceived in a miraculous sense because, quote, they are also quite natural, unquote. Dr. Bonson thus concludes that, quote, what we call miracles are more than amazing events, more than powerful occurrences, more than parabolic theological lessons. What distinguishes the miraculous event from all these other grand things which happen is its specifically supernatural character. The miracle is an extraordinary and awe-inspiring event which in its character, or sometimes in its timing, cannot be explicated by known natural principles or controlled by mere human beings. That is, its supernatural quality." Unquote. Dr. Bonson's conclusion is breathtaking in that it delivers such an obvious, question-begging argument from ignorance. It's question-begging in that Bonson is simply asserting that supernatural events miracles, have a supernatural character. And it's an argument from ignorance in that this supernatural character is determined by the fact that it, quote, cannot be explicated by known natural principles, unquote. Nowhere does the term supernatural get a definition, and thus it is simply assumed that it is a coherent concept for which to classify anything that the Christian wishes to place beyond the possibility of a natural explanation. Dr. Bonson is often considered the standard by which other presuppositionalists are compared, the William Lane Craig, if you would, of presuppositional apologetics. But if Dr. Bonson's attempt to explain miracles is so thin and so obviously fallacious, then it is clear that the messenger is not the problem, but the message itself. But in Dr. Bonson's paper, he doesn't just set up straw man arguments and underwhelm us with his definition of miracles, but there is some additional interesting commentary as he attempts to fend off other theistic notions of miracles by asserting that God is not merely an occasional meddler in the universe, but is, quote, intimately, continuously, and directly involved in all the detailed events which transpire within the created order, unquote. Perhaps even more provocatively, Bonson claims that, quote, the supernatural power behind the working of a miracle may be the living and true God whom people should worship and obey, but it might also be the prince of darkness, the devil, who wishes to deceive men and lead them into a soul-damning error, unquote. One wonders, then, that even if Bonson could actually come up with a cogent definition of a miracle that escapes his question-begging argument from ignorance, how he would know that he's not committing some, quote, soul-damning error, unquote, by believing it to be a sign from God. And before he condemned consumers of healing crystals, pyramid power, and diet fads as not having, quote, a critical mind or superior rationality, unquote, he should have constructed an argument for miracles that was at least marginally better than those he was criticizing. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. And as always, your comments are appreciated. It's a miracle. 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 Another miracle. By the grace of God Almighty. And
the pressures of the marketplace The human race A civilized consumer It's America